Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my November wrap up and talk to you guys about what books I read in the month of November. Okay, so the first book that I read in November was The Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare. So I read the month before that three historical romances and one of them was from this same series but I hadn't read them in order and I was missing number one and number two so I read the first one, The Duchess Deal, and really enjoyed it. I rated it four stars so it's a historical romance. Um, it talks about this girl who's a seamstress and she is knocking at the door of this duke because she has not been paid for her work as a seamstress for a wedding gown because his marriage got cancelled. The reason why being that the bride-to-be decided not to marry him because he is uh, terribly disfigured by a big scar from the war he was in and he's kind of like this gruff monster type of guy who's really just a marshmallow inside so obviously uh, they slowly fall in love and that's how the historical go romance goes so it was quite fun. Next I read Clown in a Cornfield that I keep trying to call Corn in a Cornfield but it's Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Cesare or Adam Cesare, I don't know if he's Italian or not. This one is a YA horror novel that I read as part of my I Read Three Horror Novels uh, series and I rated it three stars. I enjoyed it but I thought the main character was a little bit bland and the other characters were a little bit more fun to read about than the main girl in this. So we're following this girl who is new in this very small rural town in the US and when she arrives she slowly realizes there's a big divide between the older generation and the younger generation and that they kind of distrust each other and the older generation really hates uh, the teenagers and the youth that kind of like um, mocks things around and fucks things around and things like that and they just have a big problem with them and then as she slowly realizes that it's a huge issue she's invited to this party and then there's a killer clown that arrives and starts killing the guests so the teenagers one by one and it's kind of like a slasher movie but in book format so it was good fun it's quite fast-paced it was uh, quite an easy read but I just felt like it wasn't that scary and I didn't partially love the main characters, uh, the main character, as I said. Next, I read Club Dead by Charlin Harris, which is, I can't remember which one in the series, but it's part of the Suki Stackhouse series, which inspired the True Blood TV show. So it's about a waitress who can read minds. Uh, her name is Suki and she meets one day this vampire because in the state of the world where she lives in, uh, vampires have come out of the coffin and shown that they were real to the population and it brings on a lot of like politics stuff and everything because basically this Chinese company, I think, created uh, synthetic blood for the first time. So vampires don't need to drink real blood anymore. So that's why they decide to show themselves. And she gets enrolled in like a bunch of adventures as someone who can read other people's minds. She is quite useful to some of the factions of the vampires, etc. So I read Club Dead and I rated it four stars. Overall, I just love this series. There are some books that I like more than others and in general, it's just really fun. Next, I read Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. This is a collection of stories about the Norse gods and Norse mythology in general. So you have giants and stuff like that. It's not just the gods. I rated it three stars. I thought it was quite fast-paced because there are a, diff a bunch of different stories. It's not like one big book that you got to read all at once. You can literally put the book down and, you know, pick it up again later because each story is separate. But I just don't think that this is the kind of stuff that I love to read the most about. I just prefer having more of a linear story and characters that I can root for. And in this case, the main characters are the gods and they're kind of awful and often bring death to people who have asked for absolutely nothing. So I just don't think I wanted to read it any higher than that because that's kind of how I felt about the story in general. The writing style, I have nothing bad to say about. It is Neil Gaiman. He's a great writer. I really enjoy that. It's just the actual story that um, uh, just perhaps wasn't for me. Next, I read Bad Girls with Perfect Faces. Um, I also rated this one three stars, so it was a little bit of a mediocre time for me around that first week in November. But basically, this is a YA thriller 
and we follow this girl who is best friends with this guy and she hates the fact that he was broken hearted by, by the girl he was dating uh, earlier that year and when she comes back and clearly wants him back she panics and she decides to try and trick the girl into thinking that she's a guy like on Instagram messages or something and tries and to prove that once a cheater always a cheater because that's what happened uh, but things go terribly wrong and I can't really tell you any more than that because the stuff that does happen that is more thriller eh, um, happens quite late in the book like about halfway through so it's quite a slow paced one and I didn't really get attached to anyone that much so I thought it was kind of it was okay like I didn't love it I just thought it was meh Next I read Now Entering Adamsville by Francesca Zappia. This uh, I thought was a horror book or thriller type of book but actually was more fun adventure fantasy like and really made me think of Buffy. It gave me massive Buffy vibes and I really liked it. It's YA and it's about this girl who can basically see ghosts and monsters that are like fire starters and the kind of like creatures that come from something best described as similar to the Hellmouth in her town, Adamsville. And when they crawl out of there, they start fires in the town and they're supernatural fires. And the only way to get rid of those monsters is to chop their heads off and throw them back into the hole they came from. So that's kind of like her job and her calling because her mom did that before, but her mom has disappeared now. So it's her turn to take on that mantle. The only problem is no one really trusts her. Everyone thinks she's a delinquent and she was once found um, next to one of these fires because she failed at catching the bad guy. And everyone thinks that she's the one who set up the fire, even though she's not. And you know, she wasn't actually arrested, but Everyone still thinks that she really is the one behind them. I really enjoyed the main character, I thought she was really badass, and I enjoyed the super slow burn romance, like it's not even there in this book, but I believe if a second book comes out, it will be in that one. So there's like a very, very slow burn romance that was really enjoyable to read about. Like I just loved the chemistry between the characters. I love the fact that it's also about like found family and real family like she has a cousin who uh, normally is meant to be like her sidekick almost in these adventures but they don't get along like uh, her cousin's mom has a lot of money and it's the opposite of her family and they slowly start building back a relationship together uh, so I really did love that about this book and I rated it four stars. Next, I read three more of the same series, the Suki Stackhouse series. So I read Dead to the World, Definitely Dead, and Dead as a Doornail. I rated Dead to the World four stars, Definitely Dead five stars, and Dead as a Doornail three stars. So just, you know, a bunch of different ratings there. But overall, I really enjoyed all three of these books and just the adventures that Suki goes through. So if you're interested in this series, I'm not going to give any spoilers because each book is kind of a different investigation for her and is kind of following a sort of thriller theme, but at the same time involving supernatural creatures. You have werewolves and vampires and other stuff. Next, I read Bunny by Mona Award. I buddy read this one with a group of friends that we have a little book club with, and this one I rated three stars. So this is an adult, I want to say, I'm not sure if it's young adult or adult, I'd say adult uh, horror novel. It's just plain weird. I don't even think it should be in the category of horror. It just should be in weird horror. If anything, um, it makes me think a lot more of things like Heathers and because there's a clique of girls in there and Scream Queens as well, things like that. What happens in this is uh, the main character is uh, in college in a very expensive and prestigious uh, writing university and there's a group of girls there that she has a workshop with that call themselves the bunnies and they call each other bunny so they don't even call each other by their first names they're really strange and they're very popular and no they're not popular they're just very rich and wealthy and like little cliquey and they call each other bunny one day she is invited to one of their group gatherings called the smut salon and when she's invited she decides to go because she realizes they're part of the same workshop and if she doesn't go she might just spend the rest of the year being hated by the only other girls that she has in her class so she starts being involved in their world and very strange weird shit happens 
I can't even tell you because that would be a spoiler and it's the kind of book best going into without knowing much about it but do know that all of the book has been said to be perhaps a metaphor about something so you are entering Strangeville if you start reading this it's just super fucking bizarre I didn't particularly love it most mostly because um, everything feels a little bit dreamlike and you're not entirely sure whether you're reading things that are real or if the main character is imagining things and I didn't like that part. I just would have preferred it if everything was grounded into reality and the weird shit that's going on is for sure real. That would have been more my style. Okay, so the next book I read was The Whisper Man by Alex North. So this is an adult thriller novel and I just really liked it. I rated it four stars. It wasn't super twisty, like there's no huge twist towards the end that you can expect, but it's just a straightforward, you know, thriller novel where you're trying to figure out what happened, who's the bad guy, is, you know, are the good guys gonna survive, blah blah blah. It was still good fun, it really well written. There's a huge theme of fatherhood in this. So the story that it tells is about this serial killer that used to be in action, as in like that used to kill, 10 years ago called uh, the Whisper Man because he would whisper at the windows of his intended victims, which were all little boys of like maybe, uh, I think they're said to be like six, seven years old or something. And he would like whisper to them their names until he would be able to lure them out and kill them. So that's why he was called the Whisperman. And then 10 years later, which is when we start the book, we are following mainly um, a detective who used to be on the case 10 years ago and is the one who arrested the Whisperman and uh, a father who's recently widowed and his kid and they've just moved into a new house and the kid acts like he is having those imaginary friends that sound a lot like ghosts of those children that died because he's saying things that he shouldn't know about and it's a little bit spooky. It is a thriller, it's not a horror novel or supernatural novel but it was really spooky at some points and I just, everything that in, like involves scary ghost-like children, I find scary. So yeah, if you like that kind of stuff, definitely read this one. I rated it four stars. The next book I read was My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. I buddy read this one with my mom because she loves Daphne du Maurier, but I have already read Rebecca and once you know the ending to Rebecca, you don't partially want to reread it because it's kind of the main thing that is cool about the book and that is interesting about it is the twist. Uh, this one I had never read, I haven't seen the movie either so I thought it would be a good one to read. So this tells the story of a young man who is told that his cousin has just died um, in Italy after getting married to this woman who he's never met but he lived with her for like a year and then died in Italy. So this guy, his name is Philip, um, receives as in like she arrives as a guest to his house uh, his cousin Rachel as in the wife of his cousin the uh, widow now when she arrives he's at first super suspicious and really thinks that she has something to do with his death because before he died he received those very strange letters that sounded a little bit paranoid from his cousin saying like I think I'm being poisoned blah 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 and then he died quite young and it's said by the doctors that it was because of a tumor and that the tumor is the reason why he was becoming irrationally paranoid towards the end but Philip is worried that she killed him but as he starts getting to know her he slowly falls in love with her so this is the main story in this book and frankly I rated it three stars I thought it just wasn't that exciting it's especially slow and I couldn't really tell whether it was due to the time it was written because it was written in 1951 or if it's just the style of the author. Uh, but I just, it was beautifully written, but so many descriptions and such a slow pace. I think if you like slow paced thrillers, this one is great. I just personally like a little bit more action. The next book I read was actually a non-fiction book called Save the Cat, the last book on screen writing you'll ever need. I rated it nothing, I didn't rate it because it's a non-fiction and I don't actually want to rate non-fictions, but I did enjoy it, I thought it was really um, interesting. That book is well known in the world of writing and not just screenwriting because it's been used by a lot of authors as a point of reference. It basically goes through all the three acts that you have in most storylines. This book is very interesting because it teaches you a lot but it's written in a way that sometimes was a little bit arrogant and just didn't feel like 
I agreed with everything he said. I think I read another one called the 22 steps, I can't remember the exact name, I'll put it up, that I thought was better. But this one was still very uh, practical and goes through a lot of things that I thought were great and I've been personally using it to uh, try this method of owning a physical board with all three acts. So you can put post-its or cards for each scene and kind of build your board and build your story. And I had never tried that before so I really enjoyed that. It really gives you like the method of how to do that. There are some things that I just think the guy considered to be general rules that I don't think are uh, particularly true because certain books and movies both um, have done the opposite of these rules and are wildly successful and considered really really good. So I just think that it should be a little bit more open-minded in what it says rather than say that's the rule, that's how you should do it. But it was overall still a good read. The next book I read was The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes and I loved this book. I rated it five stars. This is a YA novel that has been described as similar to Knives Out, the movie. I suspect foul play. And it talks about this girl who basically is quite poor and pretty much lives in her car because she lives with her sister, but her half-sister but her lousy, abusive boyfriend has just moved back in with her, so she's like, I might as well stay in my car, I prefer that. And she is quite a badass, tough type of character, really enjoyed reading from her point of view. And one day she receives a letter that says she is needed at this estate because this millionaire, no, billionaire guy just died and has left her something in his will. And the only way the will will get read is if she's present as well. She arrives at the estate in Texas and when she gets there she meets all of his grandsons and his daughters and uh, the other people that worked on the estate. They've all been left something, but something that's like 100,000, 250,000, whatever, and she gets everything else. And by everything else I mean billions, including all his estates, so his houses, etc. She doesn't know why because she's never met this guy. She doesn't know him. She doesn't know him or who he is or what the connection is with her. And she's not she's got no clue basically why she is the sole main beneficiary of the will. No one else does either and she suddenly finds herself to be in danger because everyone has a reason to kind of want her dead if they want the money back. She slowly realizes uh, with the help of the four grandsons that the guy loved riddles, puzzles, games. It's very knives out in that way. So they all have this theory that she is his last riddle and that if they solve her as a riddle they will get the money back or something. And that's how this book goes. So it's a lot of like uh, mind games and puzzles and things like that and figuring things out of uh, uh, secret codes and things like that. So it's really fun, it's super fast paced, loads of stuff happens, action packed. Um, all the characters were so interesting, I felt like they were really well developed and I just really enjoyed it. It was just so much fun. It was like a perfect read after my cousin Rachel as well, um, which was a little bit heavier. So definitely, if you want something lighthearted and just fast-paced, this is it. Finally, and I didn't know whether to count it in this month or if it was part of my December pile of books that I've read, I read Pine. It's just that I started it in November but finished it in December on the 2nd. So this is considered a thriller novel, an adult one uh, that happens in Scotland, but I can already tell you after having read it that it's absolutely not a thriller to me, in my opinion. It has maybe 20% of the book that feels like a thriller and the rest feels more like a heart-wrenching, uh, family-type, supernatural ghost story. I can't really tell you more than that without giving you spoilers. Basically we follow this young girl, I think she's like 10 or 11 or 12 or something, she's like not a teenager yet, whose name is Lauren and we follow her and her dad. They live in Scotland somewhere in a small town, like very small, and uh, one day they are driving back after Halloween or something and they meet this woman uh, on the road who looks like she's just been through some sort of ordeal. She doesn't talk, she doesn't say anything, so they take her back home. But the day after, um, Lauren, the main character, wakes up to find that the woman is gone and she asks her dad, Neil, what happened, but he does not remember 
the woman whatsoever. And we have several other moments where this happens and it's very clear that the woman is a ghost uh, quite early on, where other people, you know, see her and say something about it and then straight after are like, what woman? What are you talking about? I didn't see anyone. Uh, so they all forget her except for Lauren. And Lauren's mom disappeared years and years ago and was considered to be a bit of a witch and Lauren herself um, has been using her grandmother's book where there's like some spells and she can read uh, people's future in tarot cards and stuff like that so there's a strong element of supernatural in this book and she is the only one who can remember seeing the woman everyone who has seen her seems to say they recognize her and it's very strongly hinted from the beginning so I don't think this is a spoiler that she looks a lot like her mom I get that I felt more like a, an atmospheric thriller maybe if you want to go that way but just it didn't feel that much like a thriller to me and I just feel like it's been miscategorized I don't know I ended up rating it three stars I thought the writing was beautiful really enjoyed it but at times it was very confusing because we have main mainly the main character we follow is Lauren and she's like 10 or something and her mind just like doesn't focus on one thing at a time and it gets super confusing every now and then I'm like well what happened what are you talking about here and the other character we follow is her dad like I just said he's quite dodgy and it's mostly in the way he reacts to certain things like he drinks a lot and things like that everything that happens with him I was just like I hate the guy I just don't like him whether he did it or not like he's unlikable that's it that's everything I read for the month of November Guys. um maybe I'm wrong in my calculations but I've just counted and I think I read a total of 15 fucking books that is a lot I don't think I've ever read this much in one month it's all thanks to the Thousand Doors readathon that I did at the beginning of the month because I pretty much read five books within six or seven days for that readathon. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, consider subscribing, ringing the bell, all that jazz, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!